I'll say for the first lab in our geology class, the Geology 110, is we're going to do an experiment. And the end result of this experiment, which we will not find out until the very end of the semester, which is I think the second week of December, we're going to see how our crystals turn out. So what we're going to do is we're going to grow crystals. And just to give you an idea what these crystals look like, these are some crystals that were grown last year. I call these the culvert group, the culvert 19 group. So just to give you an idea what some of these crystals look like from last semester. Here's a white one with no food coloring. One with just a little bit of blue in it. Kind of a pinkish, almost like a rose color. A very dark. A little bit brighter of a salmon. Another cool little cluster of crystals here. And what I call the Cheetos group. Pretty cool looking. Obviously, by looking at these, you can see that people use different um, food colorings and even different concentrations of food colorings. So this is the way the experiment is going to be set up. We're all going to start, and I put this on the board, all it's going to start out with 600 millimeters of water. All crystals are going to be grown on the same size container. They started with the same size beaker. Everything's the same. They're all set at the same temperature, 210 degrees, so not at boiling, just before boiling. They're all basically started in the same place, the same time, same room condition, same ambient air quality, and the same chemical, ammonia phosphate. NH4H3PO4. So everything's the same, so you say, well, look at this, maybe everything will grow equally. But there is a little bit of variation, and this is where we start writing our hypothesis. So the variations are simply this, is that the amount of ammonia phosphate, NH4H3PO4, is going to vary. And I'll tell you what those variations are. And then food coloring. Some are going to have food coloring and others are not. So under normal circumstances, in a normal lab setting, I would set up 10 stations, students would be broken up into groups, and then they would go ahead and take the ammonia phosphate, put it in the water, stir it, let it cool down a little bit, and then come up with a hypothesis. So here we have different concentrations. So we start out with the smallest concentration at 300 millimeters. And we go up to 400, 425, 500, and then 600. So the concentrations of ammonia phosphate have varied. And I'll talk about this more when I do a lecture for lab on Tuesday. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera here. Because I don't, so just, I'm going to do all five of these, so I'm doing it by myself. And there's one else allowed in the room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ammonia phosphate and slowly add it to, and then stir this really good here. And so I'm going to be doing this to five different stations. So we can see that all of the temperatures are set at the same temperature, 210 degrees. So I'm going to put the camera here on pause. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add all the ammonia phosphate solutions to all five of these beakers. So I'm going to take all this, stir it for a while. So it's going to take me at least a half an hour to an hour. And then I'm going to come back after I'm done with that and let these things cool a little bit. I'll add some food coloring, pour them in containers, and we'll discuss again what I did and what the concentrations. So let's put us on pause for now. All right, let's continue. So on the hot plates, on the five hot plates, I emptied the contents into the beaker, stirred until the material was completely dissolved, allowed them to cool down. So all the temperatures were the same. I turned the hot plates off at the same time, unplugged them at the same time, removed the glass beaker, and allow that glass beaker to cool. After that glass beaker cooled significantly, 
so it will not interfere with melting the plastic cup. I took that contents of that dissolved 600 millimeters of water and the ammonia phosphate, emptied them into these beakers, stirred them some more, actually these plastic cups, and then went through and added some food coloring. So let's talk about the food coloring here because I kind of did a neat little experiment here. So here we have two food colorings that are blue. Now the darker one has about, <laughs> literally, about 20 tablespoons worth of food coloring blue in it. The other one here only has one. So this is a hypothesis that we could write. Does the amount of food coloring either promote crystal growth or does it interfere with crystal growth? So we could actually write a hypothesis right there just based on these two. But the thing I wanted to kind of restate is that all of these solutions started out with the same volume of water, 600 millimeters worth. They were all basically prepared at the same temperatures. So same hot plates, same room, same temperatures. What varies here is this, it's the concentration. So this one here has 300 millimeters. The red one is at 400 millimeters. The one without food coloring, and again, here's another hypothesis that we could write. Does food coloring, or the lack of, result in different crystal growth? So this one here has 425 millimeters. This one has 600. I, blue is my favorite color, so sorry for the bias. And this has 500 millimeters, which is the highest concentration. It also has the highest concentration of Food color. So our job now is to write a hypothesis. These crystals are going to be moved into the back room. And I'll show you where they're going to go. So they're all going to be in the same environment. They're going to be covered up. They're going to be back here in a room. Nobody's going to bother them. So they're all going to grow back here on this nice little white table here. And so they're in the identical environment. Remember, we started out with this white powder, this ammonia phosphate. What different about this experiment was simply the concentrations and the amount of food coloring. So the variations, I guess I actually add to this. So our variations in our experiment are here as follows. The concentrations of ammonia phosphate varied. And food coloring, some had food coloring and some not. And then I did modify this a little bit. The two blues, I really put a lot of food coloring in the very dark blue. So we can actually write a hypothesis. So just to restate, we all start out with the same concentrations of ammonia phosphate. Same volume of water, 600 millimeters. I mean, actually, that's wrong. We start out with the same volume of water at 600 millimeters all in the same container, same temperature, same time, same place. The only thing that did vary was food coloring or not food coloring, the amount of food coloring, and the concentrations of ammonia phosphate. So we have to write a hypothesis now. And so the hypothesis about the crystal growth can vary. Say hello to the dinosaur collection. These guys belong up there, but um, haven't been in here to kind of clean house. So just to give you an idea of some of the crystal growth here. Here on this sample here, these are some crystals that we grew in the years past. You can see right here that there's a variation. These crystals are a, low, a whole bunch of small, very fine crystals. And of course, it's a really cool color because it's blue. And then these crystals here kind of have like an after crystal that kind of grew on top of them. What's often referred to as a druse. These are thicker crystals as compared to the crystals in the blue sample. And then look at the crystals that kind of look like Cheetos. They're a little bit thicker. And you can tell that the concentration of food coloring that the people had put, the students actually done this one here, they used a lot of food coloring here. So they used an awful lot of yellow to get this Cheetos look. And then here we have some very thick crystals and you can tell that the food coloring concentration in this 
particular green sample wasn't an awful lot of food coloring so they put very little food coloring in this as compared to the one right next to it where these students used a great deal of food coloring and then the blue one here used a moderate amount of food coloring and look at the crystals on this one here so this nice little clusters and then just give you an example of a crystal structure that was grown without food coloring these crystals here no food coloring was added to this whatsoever so our hypothesis you can't not write a hypothesis that says well red crystals are going to be better than the green crystals because red's a cooler color or I like red that's not really testable you might want to say something like concentrations without food coloring since it's just going to be pure ammonia phosphate might actually grow prettier crystals that are larger in size or you might want to say that large concentrations of food coloring might result in a clustering of very large crystals and that no food coloring or very little food coloring might result in very fine crystals so here's an example this blue here has very little food coloring a tablespoon basically it doesn't take much so this is just food coloring that you would put in foods this has literally about 20 times as much so a hypothesis that we could generate would be like this one here this had lots of food coloring and this resulted in very fine crystals you can see how very slender these crystals are in comparison to this these are thicker crystals and yet this green sample used considerably less food coloring so we can write a hypothesis is that greater concentrations of food coloring will result in finer or smaller crystals another hypothesis could be that large concentrations of ammonia phosphate are going to go larger crystals or maybe that smaller amounts of ammonia phosphate are going to grow larger crystals or smaller amounts might grow smaller crystals so this example here which starts out at 300 millimeters we could write a hypothesis that smaller concentrations of ammonia phosphate are going to result in smaller crystals and we can look at the other side and say well this larger concentration 500 millimeters is going to result in larger crystals or we can say this is going to grow more crystals fewer crystals that are thicker and maybe over here these smaller concentrations are going to grow many crystals that are going to be smaller and finer so there's a whole bunch of hypotheses that we can write so what you're going to do is in canvas you're going to go in the canvas and i have under lab you're going to write a hypothesis and then at the end of the semester the very last lab we do in this class we're going to look at our crystals so our crystals are starting out like this by the end of the semester it takes about eight weeks for these to grow and we take them out of their containers they're going to look like this you see they're kind of rounded because they grew in these little round containers so again concentrations is what varies here food coloring also varied some has food coloring some did not all other aspects of this experiment were identical same temperature same volume of water same chemical same atmospheric conditions same temperature of the room same day same time and that basically is our experiment for the first week of lab for geology 110 hopefully they'll find a cure to this virus and we can actually get back to teaching in this classroom this is a really a nice building nice classroom it's kind of a little messy right now and um, I don't like teaching online but it is what it is
So that concludes lab number one for Geology 110 for the fall of 2020.